Hi, I'm Jill from June Taylor and I'm back at Fat Quarter Shop with another video on how to bind your t-shirt quilt. You might have seen our presentation of making the t-shirt quilt where we join the blocks with our sash and a dash. We've got that done now and we're going to bind it. So we're going to take our black binding, which matches, take that out of the kit, and let's go to our quilt. So we're going to take our binding and simply open up the casing and start nesting our quilt block into the binding. I'm going to leave this open up here, but I'm going to start pinning um, probably about four inches down and we're going to pin that binding into place. I like to pin it all first and then go to the machine because I think it's a lot easier than winging it because I want to show you how to do the mitered corners. So you're just going to be putting your pins in horizontally with your block and then when you get down to the corner we're going to put another pin pretty close to the corner. And by the way, sometimes when I start out I put two pins in and that tells me where I have to stop and start so I do a little back tacking there. So now I get down to the corner. What you're going to do is open up that binding and we're going to actually turn the corner. So just kind of turn it like this around the corner but we're going to keep that t-shirt block corner nested right in there and then I'm going to bring the binding down and make a little crease like this, just kind of a finger pressed crease. And I'm going to flip that up and that is going to create that 45 degree miter right here. Now this might take you a couple tries. I'm trying to get a better angle so that you can see how nice this looks. And then simply bring it up and that creates that nice 45 degree right here. And then you just continue on until you get to the next corner. I like to add a pin right here as well because once you get that nice miter in place you want to hold it there. So I would pin at the corner and then when we sew, when we get down here, we're going to pivot right at that corner. So we're going to leave our needle down, turn, pivot, and then continue on sewing our binding. I'm going to pin the rest and I'll be right back. Our binding is done and we now come to the joining point. As you can see, I leave a little tail of extra binding here, at least a good three inches. And what we're going to do with that tail is open it up and just fold this to make a 45 degree. And you can kind of finger press that a little bit. And then we're just going to go right over the top of our where we began. And we're going to nest this in here so that it actually covers up where we started. And I have a pin in there. I'm going to take that out and put it right back in again, only this time I'm going to encase the new piece of binding that we put over the top. And then we'll have that nice miter right here. Now let's go to the sewing machine and we're going to do our top stitching all along here, probably about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. We can either zigzag or we can use a straight stitch around our binding. I'm going to use a straight stitch today and we are at about 2.0. So what you're going to do is simply put your presser foot down about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And I'm going to start where you can see here is where we kind of hid our binding. So that this is where we started and we did the angle over the top. I'm going to start there to kind of secure that in place. And then I'd like to continue on and show you exactly how we pivot around those corners. The reason I'm going an eighth of an inch in is I want to make sure that we secure our binding both on the front and on the back. Now I've got needle down and I'm just going to pivot around the corner, pull that pin out a little bit, put my presser foot back down, pull the pin out. And now I've enclosed that corner perfectly. You can see my stitching is done about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And when I got here, I left needle down, pivoted, and then continued on sewing. So you're catching the binding on the front and you're also catching the binding on the back. Now we did not use a walking foot, we just used a regular foot, so if that's what you have and you're comfortable with, that's exactly what we used. And again, if you want, this can be zigzagged as well. 
And again, this was my starting point where we hid the other side of the binding. And when you come around the corner, you can just restitch right over that and maybe put a little back tack right there and your binding is on. Another option is to use a zigzag stitch. And you can use a fairly wide zigzag stitch because, again, you're going into knit here and then into the cotton for the binding. And that's just going to help make sure you've overlapped both the front side of the binding and the back side of the binding. Zigzag is a little bit of a more forgivable stitch, too. So if you have that capability on your machine, you might want to consider using zigzag. We hope you've enjoyed this binding segment of the t-shirt quilt. It's really fun and easy to make one of these. And if you'd like to see the other segment where we put the quilt together, please subscribe to Fat Quarter Shop on YouTube.